Welcome back to the channel. If you've added a device to your vehicle and you need to find power for it, and a power port is just not the right solution, this video will go through the steps to identify the various power source types that are available in your vehicle, how to properly orient a fuse tap within the fuse block, and some steps to identify the appropriate fuse socket within a fuse panel in your vehicle. I'm now going to define the power source type terms that I'm using in this video. There are two main categories, switched and unswitched. A switch circuit is one that only receives power when the ignition switch or start-stop button places the ignition system into an accessory or on-run mode. On and run mode usually are associated with the engine running. Circuits that are powered in the accessory mode might have a lighter load and the ones that are powered when the ignition system is in the on-run mode typically have higher current draws. The next one is a switch circuit that has the feature of retained accessory power, at least that's the term used in GM vehicles. That is a circuit that continues to be powered after the ignition system has been placed in the off mode. The ignition switch has been turned to the off position or the start stop button has been pushed to turn off the engine. This is a circuit that usually powers accessories in the vehicle, such as radios, some small accessories. It's not meant to be powering large draw devices, but it is for convenience. So if your device needs that type of power, see if your vehicle has this feature, and if so, look for a circuit of that type. And the last type is unswitched. That simply means power is supplied to that circuit 100% of the time. Often, Dash camera parking mode support is powered by a power adapter that has switched and unswitched inputs into that power adapter. Just make sure you connect the power adapter that you're connecting into the vehicle, or be it a power port or into the fuse block, to the appropriate type of power for that device. Before you can add a fuse tap to your fuse panel, you have to know the type of fuses used in the fuse panel. On the screen, you can see the four most commonly used fuse types out there on the market today. Another task that needs to be completed is to identify a fuse socket within the fuse panel that will be used to install the new fuse tap. It would be preferable to use a fuse socket that is unused, but not all open fuse sockets in fuse panels actually have power available to them. If you must use a fuse socket that already has a fuse installed in it, then you should look at the label on the fuse panel to identify a fuse socket that is powering something that is not critical to the operations of the vehicle. You want to avoid things like ABS brakes, airbags, powertrain control modules, engine control modules, transmission control modules, any kind of module that's driven by the power from that fuse. Avoid those. In the opening segment of this video, I showed you a fuse panel, and that's a fuse panel that I'll be using to demonstrate how to locate a fuse socket within the fuse panel and test for the power source type. Now that particular fuse panel is from a Chevrolet SSR pickup from the engine bay, but you'll notice that there's an interior cover and an exterior cover to that fuse panel. So that makes that fuse panel not necessarily the best candidate for adding a fuse tap because you must route wiring out from the fuse panel to be able to power your new device. Those covers can be a problem and it's not suggested to modify those covers, especially in the engine bay since the covering is meant to protect the fuse panel from water intrusion. It is often far easier to add a fuse tap to a fuse panel on the interior of the vehicle, such as one in the dashboard or center console, or even in the trunk, because those fuse panels often do not have covers on them, so it makes routing the wiring out from the fuse tap from the fuse panel a lot easier. But not all vehicles are that way. The Chevrolet SSR, which is the example one that I'm using from the engine bay, the center console one also has some covers, so it's a little bit more difficult getting wires out of those situations. So make sure that's one of the considerations when you select the fuse panel to add your fuse tap to. Next, we need to discuss some of the characteristics of the fuse tap so that you install it correctly in the fuse panel. On the lower left, you can see that I've labeled the picture with plus 12 volts, and that is important because the fuse tap has a common connection on the left-hand side of the fuse tap. The input voltage from the fuse socket must go on the left-hand side of the fuse tap through that pin all the way up to the left side, and that's common to both fuses in the fuse tap. So as you can see on the upper left, the fuse for the new accessory goes on the very top, and if the fuse panel has an existing fuse in the fuse socket, then it must go on the lower portion of the fuse tap. And then as the circuit is completed by those fuses, then of course the power to the new accessory goes out the wire to the right to the new accessory. 
and power will go out the right leg of the fuse tap into the fuse socket, assuming that there is a fuse in the lower portion of the fuse tap. It's extremely important to remember that if the fuse socket that you're using for your fuse tap did not have a fuse in it before, do not install a fuse in the lower portion of the fuse tap. Supplying power through that fuse back into the fuse socket may cause new problems in the vehicle. You're not trying to supply power to the fuse panel, you're only trying to supply power to your new accessory. So the simple rule is if there was no fuse there to begin with, there shouldn't be one in the lower portion of the fuse tap. If there was one, you are to use that fuse in the lower portion of the fuse tap and the new accessory fuse goes on the top. Now when looking for a fuse socket, there's a few things to consider. One, the ignition needs to be in the appropriate mode to supply the type of power. As we mentioned before, there's switched power, switch power that has retained accessory power capabilities, and unswitched power. So whatever that mode is that you need for that device, make sure that you have the ignition in that mode so that you can test for power in the various sockets available in the fuse panel. Not all fuse panels will have an available fuse socket, but in this case I do have some, and it would be preferable to use a fuse socket without a fuse in it at this point in time. But not all fuse sockets contain power because not every fuse socket is wired on the back side of the fuse panel to supply power to an unused fuse socket. For my testing purposes, I'm supplying power to this fuse panel via a AC to 12 volt power adapter. And I'm going to show you that I have 13.93 volts when I use the multimeter here on the input side of the fuse panel. For demonstration purposes, I have a multimeter and a test light, but I'm going to use the multimeter here to look for power, and at the top of each fuse, there's a little piece of exposed metal from each side of the fuse. You can use that to test for power on each side. Now, if the fuse is blown, only one half of it will have power, but if the fuse is good, both sides will show power. And the, of the three fuses that I tested there, the two on the lower portion of the fuse panel do seem to have power, and again, we're assuming we've looked at the label for the fuse panel to identify the fuse sockets that provide non-critical power to something if we're using an occupied fuse socket. Now, to test for power on which side of the fuse socket, we have to remove the fuse. We can try to use the test probe light or the multimeter test probe, but in some cases it just won't make it into the fuse panel far enough to make contact with the metal. You don't want to jam your test probe in there because that will potentially bend the contacts on the back side of the fuse panel and that will potentially be a power issue going forward. So the next best thing is, you know, with a regular fuse, why don't you use a fuse itself? I'm going to take a fuse that I've cut in half and that will give me the ability to insert a fuse into each side of the fuse socket and test for power. And again, I get to test for power at the top of the fuse using a little piece of exposed metal. So that's the perfect test probe in this situation. So whatever the fuse type is, cut it in half and you've got a test probe for that fuse panel. We can now use my half uh, fuse test probe to install into the one side of the fuse socket, use the test light, and we can see by touching the top of that fuse portion there that it just doesn't have any power. Let's flip it around to the other side of the fuse socket and we do have power there. So we know which side of the fuse socket provides the power. And given that information, we know how we would have to orient the fuse tap into that socket since the left leg has to be the one receiving the power. But given the fact that the fuse tap is right up against the edge of the fuse panel edge with the covers on this one, it's just not going to be a, a viable candidate for this particular fuse tap. Now let's move on to some unused fuse sockets since that's an option in this particular fuse panel. Again, this is an example fuse panel from a Chevy SSR with covers, so it's not the best candidate, but again, we're just demonstrating how to test for power. Now there was power on that side of the fuse socket, so we know that we would have to put the left leg of the fuse tap there, and it seems to fit, but given the fact that this fuse panel has covers, it actually wouldn't be a viable candidate fuse socket because it just wouldn't allow the covers to be installed. So let's move on. Let's try to find another unused fuse socket that will hopefully let us have the accessory wire move towards the center. So that particular one that's next to the relay there, we would have to find power on the top side of that fuse socket. But let's test for it on the bottom first. Doesn't really matter the order, but you know you need to confirm that there is power because again, not all unused fuse sockets actually have power. So right now, the lower portion does not have power. So that's maybe a good sign. 
and we'll install my test lead there the half fuse on the top and we have power so that's a good sign since we have power on the side of the fuse socket that's necessary for the fuse tap since it has to come in on the left side of the fuse tap and the fact that there's a relay adjacent to that that would block it being oriented the other way this allows the wire to run towards the center of the fuse panel so that works out so this is a good choice so far and given the fact that there is no fuse to begin with in that fuse socket there's no original fuse to place into the fuse tap, just the fuse for the new accessory. So let's go pull that out. I'm gonna insert a 10 amp fuse into the fuse tap. And with that installed, we'll then be able to insert the fuse tap into the fuse socket to then confirm that we have power coming out of the new accessory wire lead there. And once we've confirmed that, then this fuse socket is a viable candidate for our fuse tap. Again, interior fuse panels don't have covers usually, so that would probably be a lot easier to install in that particular situation. Given that this particular fuse panel does have covers, you'd have to make sure that you can get the new accessory wire outside of the fuse panel. Hopefully you found this video informative and you have the skills now to tackle the task of installing a fuse tap into a fuse panel in your vehicle. If not, Maybe you have an additional question or a comment, make sure you leave that down in the comment section. I'll try to respond to you as soon as possible. And if that's still not enough, maybe you wanna seek out the advice of an automotive professional to ask a question or perform this task for you. But again, if you liked the video, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed to the Retro Car Guy 530 YouTube channel yet, please do so, it's free. And there's more reviews on products and how-tos coming soon on the channel. Thanks for watching.